Hello everyone and welcome to the final part of the 5.3 tier list. In this episode we're going to be covering the top tiers. If you want to check out the last parts of this video where we covered all the other main weapons, sub weapons, and special weapons, you can find them in the description below. These will be covering the best weapons in the game and it will be focused on competitive play on the mode Splat Zones. Purely because it's the mode that has the most competitive data, especially in Japan with a larger competitive scene. Other modes, it wouldn't really be too different for the list, but do keep in mind this is a bit biased in terms of being a zones list. And of course, keep in mind anything can work in solo queue. This is for 4v4 competitive play once again, so don't be too pressed if your weapon's not on this side of the tier list. Things can still work, and it's a very balanced game. With that being said, let's get into it. The first weapon is probably the most interesting one to talk about on this entire list, which is the Neo Splash. And the reason because of that is we've actually been seeing a lot more use of this weapon recently. So it has good potential to be even higher on this list. Originally, the shooter seems kind of lackluster because it's a four shot with slightly less range than the Zap, T-Tech, and 52 Gal. However, this weapon has a good amount of strength. It's a good bit faster in terms of getting in and out of squid form, very similar to the Junior and other lighter weapons. It has no jump RNG in the air, and it paints extremely well. It is a 210p bomb rush, but even then it can paint absolutely ridiculously fast and get plenty of them. The lack of RNG when you jump and the ability to swim around is really useful for this weapon as it makes it really hard to shoot down, which is very helpful for both mix-ups and closing the distance, which this weapon desperately needs. On top of that, this thing got burst bombs as its sub weapon, which not only helps its mobility even more, but gives it a way to finish off opponents who are running away from it, or to be able to chip opponents from a distance. It's definitely the best bomb it could have gotten and completely helps with its range disadvantage. It's very good main and sub chemistry. Overall, this weapon is very able to play a lot more supportive and allow around its bomb rush, using its special output to be able to stall out armors while still being able to take fights. It's still short range, which is its main problem, is closing the gap, especially against MPU weapons. But this weapon's actually given the tools to do so and the tools to be more supportive, which means it has everything it needs to succeed. We've also been seeing a lot in terms of gear sets, from charge up to main power up for a potential three shot to ninja squid. This just seems to be a lot of options and ways this weapon could be pushed. I honestly wouldn't be surprised to see it at a, a tier higher down the line, even without any patches. Really interesting weapon, and I'm really looking forward to seeing more Splash players in Western Japan show what it can do. Next up is the K-Pro. K-Pro is rather interesting. The two-shot with MPU is still a very strong factor with it. However, the main problem with this weapon is its painting capability, as it is pretty low along with having poor ink efficiency and a 210p special, meaning you're not going to be getting a lot of Booyah Bombs or ink, which on zones, a lot of these weapons in the top tier can paint or have something to make up for it. In this case, Pro is still good played rather passively on zones. The MPU does allow you to wall fairly well, and the bomb is still pretty useful for comboing with it, even if it's a little ink heavy. It's definitely still a solid kit, just one with not a lot of paint output, so it just becomes how well can the main weapon make up for it, which right now, eh, about here. It's not bad, but I definitely say it's more of the decline than the rise. There's a lot of other mid-range MPU weapons like the CDS and H3 that arguably have much more potential than Pro and less weaknesses, so it's hard to argue for it. Still, it's definitely very strong at being able to get kills in forced matchups. I'd argue if it was a more shorter range meta, K-Pro would be very good right now, but because there's a lot more mid-range weapons, I don't think its strengths of a two-shot kill time at that range are really as notable as it used to be. It's still a very solid weapon though. Next up is the Kensa Rapid Blaster. The Kensa Rapid Blaster is just very interesting overall once again. Being able to abuse blast radiuses in quick succession with its range is very good for it. It's a good way to chip armors, poke behind corners, and help with some map weapon matchups, especially against CDS, which is, as we're going to get to later, a very important matchup. Torpedo is very useful in this thing. Being able to poke longer range weapons like chargers at a distance with the extra throw range and be able to get in to poke with your blast radius can make it a problem for things outside of its distance. But the main thing of this weapon is its ability to use rolled torpedo to combo with it. Because the torpedo's rolled hitbox is fast, blows up almost immediately, and does 35 damage, you can combo it with a direct for a one shot or an indirect for a two shot. It overall just gives it a lot more threatening capability because rushing it down is a lot harder. 
This is the main problem for all Rapid Blasters, its ability to get rushed down, which is why they use so much swim speed. Having a sub weapon that, direct that directly mitigates that while giving you extra mobility because of its ability to paint your feet and be thrown fast is a huge upside. Ultimately, the main problems with this weapon are its lackluster special, which to its credit, Baller still works fairly well at keeping it alive and helping its positioning. It's just not the best special it could possibly have. And its overall lack of painting capability, which while not horrible, isn't too great. It's also worth mentioning it's a 200p baller. You'll still get plenty of them, but it's definitely less than other specials. The Armor Rapid is actually pretty different, the Rapid Blaster Pro Deco. This one is definitely played more as a backline role in terms of substituting in for something like a Charger or a Ball Point. This one's played much more passively in order to poke at a safe distance and plays around its wall and distance to keep it alive. It can't be anywhere near as aggressive as the Rapid, as the Kensa Rapid Blaster, but being able to get armor as a special is a huge upside and the extra range and ability to run more main power up for a longer, for a larger blast radius means it is better at long distance poking and can do better against certain other mid-range matchups like Squeezer and CDS. Ultimately, I'd argue that the main weapon and sub combination are slightly weaker, but its ability to play well in that kind of backline role works very well for the weapon and armor is a very strong special for it. Most of the time it's ran in a double armor comp because it doesn't get too many armors on its own, but it's perfectly good at fitting into that role. Next up is Sorella Sorellabrilla is one of the weapons that used to be at the very top of the game for so long and now it's finally fallen down a bit. It's still very good at stalling, due to the shield HP and its ability to regenerate health fast. The damage is still threatening. Even if it's weaker, you still have to be careful about getting bursted down quickly and keeping your distance. Ultimately, Brella is very good at stalling fights and being able to play around Bomb Rush. Its ability to bully certain 1v1s or stall out 1v1s is absolutely great, and just makes it a constant threat. You can't challenge it one-on-one -on -one with most weapons, or it's going to either stall you or double-team you, get you killed somehow. The main problems with this weapon is its ink efficiency and its weakness in getting double teamed itself, since if it can be fought from multiple distant angles, it's just really hard for the shield to do anything. However, the main reason I really have this solo is because in terms of being able to distract and bait and take attention, CDS just does it way better. It has way less weaknesses, is way better at dealing with being double teamed, and overall in terms of having a same kind of supportive aggressive role, I just think CDS is much better at it. I still think Brella is solid, but there's only been very few people and entirely people in Japan who have been able to prove what the weapon can do since most West players, including myself, don't play it anymore due to the latency that can make it not work in this scene. But even disregarding that, it's just hard to see how it can be proven. It definitely can be done, but it doesn't seem to be worth the investment. It's still a very strong weapon that can totally be made work, but it's something you really have to enjoy and being willing to put up with in order to make it happen. Tenebril is a fucking ridiculous weapon. The main weapon is probably one of the craziest things in the game. The shield both regenning and being able to be moved with while launched just means it's so much of a problem. Ten is the best weapon in terms of being able to take space and control areas, just by its pure survivability alone. The camo tent with mines and hammer is very interesting, as mines allows it to put more pressure in stall areas it's not in, especially on the zone and hammer just gives it another big threat. Break the shield? Well, it might hammer you if you're too close. Better keep your distance from the shield if it has hammer, or you could get bursted down instantly. Having a one-shot along with that launchable shield just makes it a huge threat. You can't get close to it without getting killed very quickly. Taking down the shield requires an investment. It means you're going to have to use multiple people to deal with it, bombs, or potentially specials. It's very much a resource game. Can you kill Tent quick enough with the little resources to make it worth it, or is it going to eat your all, all your attention? You could ignore Tent, but then the Tent might be taking some space or having another angle you're going to have to worry about. It's always a cost like that. The main problems with this weapon are its slow speed and its weakness to bombs, since it can break the shield pretty fast with a lot of bombs in a composition. There's definitely plenty of counterplay, but Tent also creates just a whole nother dilemma of how to play the game, and how to play around it. It's something that constantly has to be dealt with, and its optimization is not only going to be on the tent players, but how well people can play around its kind of pressure. Speaking of weapons that distract and take resources, we got Inkbrush Nuva, which is the absolute king of it in this game. This weapon is crazy fast with its rolling, along with having an ink res effect, 
which means it's just very easy to get behind you and stay alive. Couple that with its ability to paint insanely well and its quick baller that's now faster due to it being light, and it just has a ton of survivability. Letting an inkbrush get behind you is very much a dangerous thing, but unlike Tent, if you leave it alone, this thing's gonna get a baller and then come back at you with a survivability special. It has to be kept dealt with. Overall though, I do think Inkrush struggles more in terms of taking fights. It doesn't have the same power of a tent and you have to get very close to kill people, which means people with very good awareness can keep an Inkrush away. Even weaker supporter weapons can stall an Inkrush out from getting a kill in a way a tent can deal with better. Ultimately though, I think its versatility in terms of being able to paint and use its special to distract is still very good. It definitely has much more mobility and kit-based distraction compared to Tent, and it can work super well. Overall, I think just the main weakness is the ability of how well it can be ignored. If team comps can play together and keep an inkbrush away, getting in can be hard. So it really just depends on that. I won't say too much about Permabrush, because it's very much a similar game. Except in this time, rather than playing as Distract Heavy, you farm armors, use the armor, then typically go in, try to get a trade, or play behind them. Permabrush can get armor incredibly fast. Sprinkler's still a throwaway sub, but it just doesn't really matter. The weapon's paint capability in 180p armor is ridiculous. The amount of armors a Permabrush can get while still getting a ton of trades is just absolutely insane. It's just able to get a ton of armors and then go aggressively and utilize its own armor. It's probably the best weapon at actually using its own armor to get aggressive without lowering its armor output like Tryon H3 does. Overall, very good. I put it around the same as Inkbrush Nuvo. I don't think it has as good distraction or threatening power when it's behind, but the armor output makes up for it to make it very even. Next up is Tri-Slosher. Tri-Slosher is another one I could definitely see being a tier above. While it doesn't seem to have as great range, the middle slosh has a lot more range than you might think, being able to outrange stuff like ten attacks, which is very good in the right hands if you're able to hit with that slosh consistently. Burst Bomb Armor is an amazing kit, not only giving it more mobility, a burst bomb combo for kills, and the ability to throw burst bombs in quick succession by using your armor to throw more, it's overall very solid. 190p armor is still very fast, and it can get a good amount of it, so I think it's very useful for it. Honestly, I think it's just a very strong kit on a strong main weapon. Overall though, it still does need to get kills and play aggressively, which can be a problem against specific comps. Longer range weapons can deal with it fairly well, map geometry being flatter can be a big problem for it. So overall there are definitely counterplay to it, but I think the main weapon is just very good in terms of being able to play close range. Its paint is still very solid as well, so it definitely can't be counted out of that. Next up is V Slosher. Alright, I'll be honest, this one's kind of biased. I think Vanilla Slosher's kit is really good. I think Suction Bomb is very useful for potential comboing and walling out, and Tenna Missiles is a solid special for it. Soda definitely has more results, and I could definitely see why Slosher players tend to play Soda over it, but I do still think that Vanilla Slosher is very solid in zones. The main weapon is just really good at getting kills, overall bullying a lot of matchups and being able to play angles very well. It's very much a weapon that you have to deal with. Yes, it has to play for kills, but its kit here does help. 180p missiles is still fairly fast, even if it's not great, and Suction Bomb is still nice for poking. I think definitely the Sodas kit helps it play more aggressively better, but I still think this is able to do kind of a hybrid that has its uses. It just depends what we have to see. Kensa Machine. This is the definition of a splashdown weapon getting hard carried by the sub and main weapon. The main weapon of machine is ridiculous. The hitbox of this indirect is crazy, allowing it to be able to poke around walls like a blaster. The direct gives it a quick kill time. Overall, very strong at that, and its strafing speed while sloshing is fast. Its ink efficiency isn't great, but it isn't poor. Its main weapon can't paint too well, but this thing is paired with fucking Fizzy Bomb giving it a mobility option, an option to combo tick damage similar to the Kensa Rapids Torpedo, the ability to move in more, and an ability to pay and install the objective. If this thing didn't have Splashdown and had a good special, it could honestly be in the X tier. For God's sakes, it is such a huge shame this weapon is such stuck with Splashdown. It still is able to compete and do well at top level, which is why it's this high up. But damn, the special really holds it back a lot. It's just so much of an issue getting able to use Splashdown off. 
But even if you're going to justify calling Splashdown decently somehow, you can't argue its utility to compare it to something like Armor, Missile, Bubble Blower, Bomb Rush, Ink Storm is just way lower. Having one of your four specials be wasted on something that's almost completely useless is just a huge downside. Overall, it's still an amazing main weapon though, being paired with a great sub that's both strong and has good kit synergy. Alright, x Flasher. I'm gonna... let's see. Alright, okay. x Flasher, solid weapon, overall. Very good at painting and stalling objective. However, this kit's shit. If this main weapon didn't carry it super hard and being so good at stalling zone and being able to do massive damage with being able to do 90 over walls, this thing would be so much lower. Not only is Baller alright for it only, but they made this thing heavy Baller, which means it's really slow and able to get killed out of it a lot easier than other Baller weapons. This is the only heavy Baller weapon in the entire game. So when this weapon was turned into a Heavy Baller special, it was entirely just for X-Flow. Point Sensor is alright on it. It's still a shit sub, but at least it can help you with hitting over walls, which makes it somewhat useful. Overall, this weapon's main advantage is just its 90 damage and its ability to lob damage over walls at such a distance. It can pressure a lot while being safe. However, I'd argue on a lot of the maps, Charger and other long-range weapons can still very much limit its overall influence. And the main thing is just that other backliners all tend to get a very good special. Firefin with Bomb Rush, E-Leader with Ink Storm, Ballpoint with Ink Storm, Bamboo with Missiles, Squiffer with Armor. This just isn't the same having a baller. I think it can still work, but it's a lot more limiting. Very strong weapon still, of course, but definitely a shame its kit is as bad as it is. It could definitely be one of the best weapons in the game with a better kit. Nautilus? Alright. While a lot of Western players seem to think this weapon is broken, the truth is it's not. Its paint really isn't that good, and its special is something that can easily be counterplayed, especially in zones. Overall, that's really the two main weaknesses. The overall thing about this weapon is its mobility in terms of being able to hold a charge, and the shot speed. Nautilus shots travel faster than anything in the game. It's basically the closest thing to hit scan. Hell, it's faster than actual chargers, which is crazy. It shreds very fast and does very well against midline weapons. It can struggle without map control, as its ability to be as mobile as it is is highly dependent on having the map, which is its main problem. Overall, this weapon actually has very limited results in Japan compared to the western scene. Like, way more limited. But even then, there have been western players like Bagel and Biscuit who have proven its ability to work even in zones against Japan. So, it definitely has the potential in this mode. You have to be an absolute god at inkjet in order to make it work though, and you have to be really good at working around your weaknesses. Very solid, definitely better in other modes, but still very good in this mode too. Alright, ballpoint. This weapon used to be broken, then they nerfed it a lot. Now it's still solid. There's not a lot of ballpoint players, but those who are dedicated to the weapon know it's still very strong. It's overall still a jack-of-all-trades weapon. No other backline in the game is as good as defending itself as Ballpoint. Its ability to switch to a close range, mobility oriented option is really good and useful for it, and something that should not be overlooked. Its kit with beacons is really nice, as no other backline that's good here has this, special, has this sub. Yes, there's Tent, but that's not going to be a backline roll. This weapon is your backline beacon weapon if you ever needed one. The overall flaws I would say is just its matchups against Charger and its 220p Ink Storm. Overall, it can still be very slow at killing at long range, and Charger has more range than it, which means Ballpoint's influence is very limited with Charger in the game. Without Chargers, honestly it's really, really good at being able to bully a ton of weapons, and dealing with a Ballpoint without having a Sniper or Ballpoint of your own is honestly really hard. But it's still a very strong weapon and can compete. You just need the right comp and playstyle with it in order to deal with certain matchups. Overall, very solid backline. Classic Squiffer. Alright, here we go. I've talked about Squiffer being a good main weapon, and I've talked about it in the other tiers quite a bit, so I'll save the discussion this time. But I will just say that this thing is a 170p armor weapon when MPU can help you not only have more range, but more paint. You can literally get the amount of armors that a support does. Yes, you're not bringing the exact same support to the, t to the table, you're not going to be painting as much, but you're still going to have a ridiculous ar armor output, a still good amount of paint, 
and being able to use the mobility of your charge because you can jump with it and the strafe speed is solid. Along with just being able to move with the charge is very good for it. Yes, point sensor sucks on it. If it had a different sub, it would be higher, but I still think Squiffer is very good. Like with Ballpoint, it can struggle at dealing with charges or other longer range weapons, as well as its inability to have a bomb. But it's overall still very solid, and it continues to be proven to be better and better than people think it is. Squiffer has been on the rise this past year, and it's only going to go further in my opinion, so I can't wait to see what people do with it. I'm glad it's no longer seen as an inferior bamboo. Speaking of that, bamboo. Bamboo is still very solid. Overall, still a very good ability to one-shot with main power-up. Even if it requires a lot of gear, it's still very solid at it. Its paint is alright. Definitely a lot weaker since it has less shots with the main saver nerf it's gotten recently of 20%, giving you 11 instead of 14 shots. Curling Bomb is not good on it, but you're not going to be using your sub a lot anyway. So, whatever. Not a huge deal here. Ten of Missiles is great for it. It gives it an ability to deal with longer range backline weapons by pressuring them with the missiles and forcing them to move. Bamboo is just very much a wall. It can be dealt with with specials, but main weapons can't really rush it, even some of the better ones like CDS and Entzap. And Soda Slasher. Ultimately, it still requires a lot of angles to deal with that weapon. So, it's very good in that regard. Its pain is overall a little bit worse, and its ability to deal with backlines is a little bit worse, but it's still very solid. And now we get to the S plus tier, where most of the best weapons in the game besides two reside. First up is the Splattershot Jr. Splattershot Jr. has been top for a while. Pretty well known as to why. An insane painting output overall is very useful for it good mobility solid kill time even with the rng the weapon has being able to throw splat bomb and paint without running out of ink pretty much ever is a huge advantage for it as it allows it to basically always throw bombs without any commitment the larger ink tank just helps us even more allowing it to have a double bomb kit with only last ditch effort meaning you don't need to invest any abilities into sub saber normally taking two peers worth of gear Overall, able to run charge up, swim speed, a ton of different abilities, all give it a lot of utility. Overall, I'd say it's the second best armor support in the entire game right now. Very good at getting a consistent amount of armor output, paint on the floor, and bomb pressure. Its main weaknesses are its inability to fight as well as other weapons. Even though it can do it sort of well, it still has to be very close to do so. And the fact that it does need Object Shredder in order to break Ink Armors in one shot, since it does 28 damage. Overall, pretty self-explanatory, very nice supportive option to be able to get frequent armors to let your team in, and get the map control to have your weapons thrive. Next up is L3D, the best inkjet weapon in the game. Overall, I'd honestly say this is just a mid-range version of the Neo Splash. It still has the same insane painting output and mobility, Though it's definitely a bit more committal, it can run MPU without having to commit too much gear, giving it a good amount of gear freedom, and the burst bombs help for finishing or comboing with the main weapon. Overall though, the main thing that would hold this thing back is Inkjet, once again being very mediocre and hard to use in zones. If this thing had something like a bomb rush, it would be a very different story in terms of how it would be able to use it, since it can get a high output of specials. Being 200p with arguably the best paint in the game though is still a pretty huge upside allowing it to both take fights and outmaneuver zones. It can struggle a little bit with dealing with chargers since its burst keeps it from swimming around for a good amount of time even if it's not a huge commitment. And overall it can still struggle against more longer range weapons such as DK Pro, Doobie Squelchers, or Foil Squeezer. Very solid, very good at painting, very strong kit, overall very good. Next up is the H3D, the ultimate support aggressive hybrid. This is definitely a lot of times compared to Zap and Junior in terms of being able to have armor support, but it has a few advantages. Overall, it has much better distance paint in comparison since it paints from a mid-range. Its kill time with a one-shot or an MPU two-shot is absolutely ridiculous. Overall though, I think this weapon is just requires a ton of individual skill. There are currently at one person in the western scene and around three in Japan who really show what this weapon can do in top level. You have to be that good at it. 
being able to have these kind of engagements with the range and the potential one shot gives you types of walling situations and fights that Zap and Junior could only dream of getting, let alone actually be able to do. H3 just has a lot more actual output capability. However, it's locked behind a skill ceiling and a skill floor that are both really high. Q20P on armor along with most H3s using an MPU build means you're going to have less armors, with the other weakness being the less mobility it has since you have to commit to a burst with around 20 frames of end lag. It's overall really strong, solid weapon that relies a lot on the individual skill of the player to push it. It could be higher or lower depending on what you judge that maximum skill to be capable of. As of right now, I would put it in S+. Even if only a few players are capable of doing it, that's the thing. There are players capable of using it and showing that it can compete with these weapons. I think it's a very interesting and one of my favorite weapons to watch. Foil Squeezer. This thing is probably top three main weapons in the game. It's basically K-Pro with its max range, except it has way more range, being slightly less than fucking Jet Sculpture, a literal backline. Splat Bomb is an amazing sub, and along with 180p, or 190p, excuse me, Bubble Blower, allows it to be able to abuse the bubble combo for closer range or being able to be more aggressive. Between the deadliness of the main weapon and the bubble combo, it makes it extremely deadly. The only things that are even remotely bad about this are its ink efficiency, which means you can't use bombs with it as much unless if you dedicate gear to it, its gear dependency for bubble blower, which isn't even really a huge downside, and I guess the fact that its turfing mode isn't great, but it's still far from bad. It's better paint than K-Pro has. I could honestly see this weapon being a lot higher. Its kill time is fast, its range is good, the combos it can get with bubbles along with being able to use them for spacing is amazing, it's able to run gear for bubbles, it's just absolutely insane. The amount of range, kill time, overall just incredible weapon that could be pushed clearly even further. It's hard to argue there's too many flaws for it, it's just really, really good. I'm going to skip over VDS. The only thing I'm going to say is that its kit is slightly worse than CDS, which is why it's a tier below. But Dually Squelchers are going to be the bulk of this conversation in terms of being compared to what I'm talking about every other main weapon. So I will get to that when we get to CDS. Next up is Vanilla Tent. This is basically the same notes as Camo Tent, but with a much more orientated kit for it. While Camos is a bit of a hybrid that can turn into more aggressive threat with its hammer, this kit is purely supportive, with the bubbles being able to be used for survivability and forcing an area even more than the 10 shield already would, with the 10 shield and damage shots being very good at controlling said bubbles, and beacon allowing more jumps in, or mobility for both it and its team to be able to access this place as it gets to. Very strong, pretty much everything I said about Camo 10 applies here, just what in my opinion is a better kit in most situations. Soda Slasher is once again what I said about uh, vanilla slasher. However, Splat Bomb is a lot better at comboing with it with a faster detonation time. Even if it doesn't work with a sub of bomb defense, being slightly weak will allow it to work, which is a very threatening combo. Slasher can play angles very well, and Burst Rush is an amazing special for it. It can be a bit inconsistent, but its damage compared to just working with the soda itself, allowing you to get kills, is really insane and just puts a huge threat. Rushing down a slosher using Burst Rush is near impossible. You have to respect the fuck out of the thing when it uses it, or have a good way to deal with it, or it's going to kill you fast. It overall just has very good mobility, a very solid kit, and can play for kills. It does struggle a lot against certain weapons, such as Dooley Squatcher's Intent, as well as when it doesn't have map control, which is why it tends to be very aggressive with QR. With the overall angles it can play, the damage output it has, the Burst Rush and the Splat Bomb sub weapon all work very well to create a very strong main weapon that can play very well in terms of moving in with armor. Next up is the Firefin and Firefin Scope. Chargers will only get better as time goes on in this game. It's something we've seen forever as the overall skill ceiling of the player base gets higher. Weapons that have a high skill cap will rise. I expect to see Firefin and E-Leader in X tier in the future as Charger players improve with it. It's hard to deny it. The amount of long distance pressure it has just absolutely trumps every other backline in the game. Having to deal with charger sightlines forces you to play around things that counter it, which in this case you either have Tenebrella Shield or you have special weapons. Or maybe if you're lucky an angle, but chargers might not let you get that close. 
So good luck dealing with it. Chargers can still be hard countered by a lot of the specials in the game, such as armor and missiles. But that's the thing. You need to play around specials, and you can't play in Charger sightlines. The amount of raw pressure a good Charger has is what makes it th so threatening. The differences between E-Leader and the Firefins are a bit different. E-Leader has more range, better paints, and a faster special output with 170 compared to the 210 of Firefin's Bomb Rush. However, Firefin is much more capable of defending itself, even with the scope kit. The wall allows it to stall a lot better, and the suction launcher is a bit more versatile in its usage on zone. I'd say these are all even on zones, even if the regular chargers would take E-Leader down on every other mode, this is the mode where they're even. The pain of the E-Leader, the range of the E-Leader, and the faster special output all play a factor in zones more than every other mode. Very strong weapons that could easily be higher if they're pushed, though overall there are still a lot of weapons and comps that are able to beat it by playing around specials properly. So we'll just have to see how good these Charger players can get. And we are here, finally, the very top of the board. Ends up 85, this is the weapon everyone knows is good. I don't think anyone's surprised to see this thing up here, regardless of what skill level you're at. You've probably heard this weapon is good before, probably heard it a lot before, and you're gonna hear it again. This thing is a lot similar to Junior. It doesn't have the same bomb output, the mobility is still great, and it's much better at fighting in close quarters, since it doesn't have as much RNG and the shots are still very fast. Suction Bomb is arguably the better supportive sub, and last ditch effort allows it to make up for its ink efficiency. Zap and Junior trade places a lot, but I would say right now, as the meta gets more main weapon orientated with people abusing stuff like CDS, Charger, and Soda more, that Zap tends to thrive more. The more special spam a meta tends to be, I think the better Junior gets to be. But the more main weapon orientated it is, I'd say the better Zap gets to be. A good example of this would be the last meta of Brella, Bamboo, and CDS, all of these weapons being better in the previous patch, made Zap the better option with its ability to fight these weapons. In this case, we'll have to see, but for now, I see Zap as just overall the better option. Yes, it's a bit slower at the armors, and a bit less ink efficient, but everything else it has is slightly better than Junior, which is why I put it here. Very strong. Alright, it's time to talk about CDS. If I'm being completely honest, besides Charger at an insanely high skill cap, no main weapon can compete with this thing. They just can't. This weapon's only problem is ink efficiency, to the point where you can barely use your sub weapon, and they don't even care about that. You have amazing mid-range paint, good range, MPU for a three-shot potential, and then the dodge rolls. Dooleys have dodge rolls a lot, and normally I've said that they can be problematic due to their lag. However, Dooley Squelchers don't fucking have lag. Not only are they the longest rolls in the fucking game, but you can slide after them. On top of that, you can jump after a dodge roll, not only immediately, but you get to keep the faster fire rate and better accuracy from turret mode. This means you have literal mix-up options immediately after the longest dodge roll in the game, combined with everything else. The main weapon is just so ridiculously broken. It's insane. This thing can play off angles and alone on its own. I talked about how Brella can do that. You want to know the difference? Brella's not that mobile. Brellas have to dedicate their entire kit to swim speed and run speed to be able to do that. This thing can escape through enemy ink without a scratch. The difference in mobility and range just allows it to put so much pressure. If you ignore it, it's going to go in and poke you. The second you turn around to fight it, it's already going to be out of there. Maybe it can't get kills as well as some frontliners, but the idea that it can paint, can be able to use Inkstorm fairly efficiently, has the MPU damage, has the mobility, has the mix-up options, you just can't compete with this. So many frontline weapons are just absolutely ruined by the mere existence of Dooley Sculpture. In terms of VDS, 190p missiles are nice. It's technically 20 lower than the 210 Storm, but Storm tends to be more useful with how the weapon is played and makes it more threatening with the MPU it has, and Splat Bomb still has some uses occasionally where you will be able to use it. 
it's hard to tell what they're going to do about dually sculptures because the thing that makes it broken is also what makes it unique. How do you tone down that dodge roll without it feeling like dually sculptures? We'll have to see. Sculptures have been good even before main power up was added and had to be nerfed. So it should have been no surprise that when it got the arguably best main power-up effect in the game, it would once again rise to top tier. Even with the last patch hurting its ink efficiency and its shot size, it's still the best weapon in the game. And it's hard to see it changing anytime soon. Unless the game is patched or a significant amount of time passes, I don't see this weapon being passed by anything in the game. But hey, that's just my opinion. I hope you've enjoyed this series of tier lists. It's very interesting to look at this game and try to rank things, as it's really hard. There'll definitely be a lot of differences between my rankings and other players. But, in my opinion, this is where things stand. It'll be interesting to see how things change. I have to wait a while to make a tier list because this patch, while being released over five months ago, still has taken so much time to develop. And there's still going to be so many weapons that can change places by people pushing them or discovering more about it, and I can't wait to see what happens with it, regardless of if patches continue or not. But that'll be everything from me. Once again, I hope you've enjoyed, and if you like my content, be sure to subscribe and like the video. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you guys later.